Okay, I have a wonderful original card effect to share with you today. And in the process of doing so, I'm introducing you to the most important sequence in all of mathematical card magic. It's called the 2A Morse sequence. And it is also referred to as the fair share sequence in the sense of having a list of items that two individuals can choose from. So what is the fairest way for them to take turns making their selections? Well, that's what the 2A Morse sequence is. It is theoretically the fairest way for those two individuals to make their choices. So I will be demonstrating that idea today. And in fact, in the description below, I will link a playlist that will take you to some of the amazing mathematical card effects that have been created using truncations of this fair share sequence. So if you want to see more examples of the kind of thing I'm doing here, take a look at that playlist. So what I have here is I have four clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. And in our mind's eye, we're imagining dividing these up among four people eventually. But we would like to do it in, quote, a fair way, where the hope is for all of them that they'll get one of each. Now, they may not know which club or which heart they get, but they're hoping to get one of each, if possible. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a series of random choices that you're free to make, and we'll see where your choices lead. Does it lead to a fair outcome for everyone involved? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll ask you, which of these four piles should I pick up first? Your choice. Hearts, okay, what next? Diamonds, clubs, spades. Okay, very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to deal them out into uh, four piles. Kind of, We can even go like this if you like. <laughs> four piles of four cards each. And I'm gonna have you tell me how to stack these. Which one should I pick up first? Top right, bottom left, top left, bottom right. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to perform something called the Charlie Shuffle. And if you haven't seen this before, I'll add a link in the description below. It's a great one to learn, actually. It's very convincing and it's equivalent to just an ordinary packet cut. And in fact, I would like you to freely cut the cards and complete the cut. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to deal out cards to the table until you tell me to stop. Now we're shooting for about half of the cards so that we can mix these well. So I have two, three, four. I'll keep dealing until you say stop. Stop there. Want one more or one less? One more? Okay, that's fine. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called a rosette shuffle. This is where you spin the cards and then you just bring them together however they you know, kind of choose to interlace. You can get in there and help me. Okay. So that's called a rosette shuffle. Okay. It's equivalent to a riffle shuffle, by the way. And then from there, I'm going to deal out just half the cards, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, drop the other half over here. And then this is where we're going to now use the fair share sequence. Because what I'm going to do, if you just watch, it's not too hard to remember. I'm going to deal out into a triangle clockwise like this. I started dealing here and I went clockwise. And then you just stack in opposite order counterclockwise. Okay, for that one. We'll do the same thing here. So technically this is where we're invoking the fair share sequence. We're using the information in that sequence to arrange these cards. Well, how does that help us? Well, it happens that this fair share sequence will put the cards in an order that's virtually impossible to destroy by way of any of the common systematic mixing procedures used today. So for example, for this one here, I can offer you hundreds of ways of mixing it where, where you make the choices of how many times to perform the certain mixing procedure or the stacking order or whatever. So why don't we mix maybe just using a fairly common uh, mixing procedure, just a left right shuffle with random stacking decided by you. How would you like these stacked? Right on left? 
Okay, would you like to do any more of those? Just one more, okay. Do one more. You want left on right or right on left? Right on left again, okay. Another one that's systematic in nature is called the Klondike Shuffle. This is where you take the top and bottom cards off as one, okay. So how many more of those would you like me to perform? It is a free choice. Two more, okay, very good. Now a note to you as the performer, the spectator can ask for any number of these. They truly, truly can. You can do none of them, two of them, 50 of them if you have the time, okay? Hopefully I did all the ones you asked. <laughs> if not, I apologize. We could have done more. Um, now for this one here, why don't we mix it completely differently? What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the mange over, under, over, under, over, under, over. How many more of those would you like me to perform? Just one more. Okay, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Okay, we can also deal out into four piles like this. Would you like the top row stacked on the bottom or vice versa? You want bottom on top. How would you like these stacked? Right on left. Okay. Would you like to do any more of those? You don't. Okay. Now, just to give you one final choice, one of the most destructive systematic shuffles ever invented is called the down under shuffle, the Australian shuffle. So if you'd like, I can perform that on one of these, if you would like, because that's really going to <laughs> mix things up. So would you like me to perform it on either one? You do, okay, which one? It's your choice, left one, okay. So let me show you how this works. Oh, by the way, you can perform as many of these down unders on both of these, different numbers of them as you like. It won't hurt anything, okay? But I've just done one to keep it from getting too tedious for everybody to watch. Okay. So I think you would have to agree that nobody could know the precise composition of these two piles and no one could know the particular ordering of the cards within these piles, even if you knew what cards were there. And that's simply for the reason that none of us could have anticipated what choices you would make regarding these various shuffles. So what we're going to do to finish is all I'm going to do is I'm going to do that same Magical dealing out into a triangle. This is where the 2A Morse uh, sequence is coming in. At least a eight segment truncation of it. Do the same thing here. Stack in opposite order. And then at this point, I'm just gonna deal off the top four into one pile. Leave the other four as another you know, second pile. Okay, so we have four piles of four cards each. So you can imagine this goes to like spectator one, two, three, and then four. Okay, very good. Okay, now because I changed the size of the window to include this Wikipedia page, I just realized that my written prediction, which was in camera view before I changed that, is no longer in camera view. Um, so why don't I'll just slide the whole thing over and you can see that it's actually pinned to the board there. Okay, so let me bring that off. But it essentially states what it is we were hoping to do from the very start, if you remember. What was the goal here? What were we hoping to accomplish in, in terms of fairness? So we had clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. Wasn't the goal to be perfectly fair and have every one of those four people come away with one of each of the suits? Well, that's really all our written prediction claims here. Um, now, we don't know if it's true or not, but each set of four cards will consist of exactly one club, heart, spade, and diamond. Okay. I don't know what you think the chances of that are, but considering all of the mixing that was controlled by you, I think the chances would have to be very, very small. So let's just take a look. So this is like spectator one. Did they receive one of each suit? That was kind of the hope. Club, heart, spade, diamond. Yes, they did. Okay, they're walking away pretty happy. What about spectator, I guess that's two, spectator three. <laughs> Club, heart, spade, diamond. Yes, they're happy to. Spectator two. Club, heart, spade, diamond. It's looking very, very good in, sense, in the sense of fairness. 
Club Heart Spade Diamond. <laughs> we nailed it. Okay, well, if you do everything that I did, this will work for you every time. And it's using the almost magical properties of the 2A Morse sequence. In fact, the sequence on the left, let me, I'll use the mouse to point it out here. But right here, so you can see the mouse moving, it's building truncations of the 2A Morse sequence. To build the 2A Morse sequence, it's a recursive process. And they're kind of showing you how that's done. In the playlist below, these are the kinds of sequences I use to pull off some amazing magic. So right now, they are 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. That's called a Bessie sequence of order 8. And it's the very sort of thing that I've actually took advantage of here to pull off this particular card effect along with something called the Gilbreth Principle. And I can add a link in the description below. That's when we dealt out a certain number of the cards and we performed a rosette shuffle. You remember that and brought those together? That was the Gilbreth Principle using at that point in the routine. And then after that, we're using these segments of the 2A Morse sequence to ramp up the magic even higher. Okay, well, thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.